All right. So um, um, I, Sakila, and I would like to uh, greet you guys in the Force Asia back again after a one-year-long hiatus. Um, if just now I mentioned Sakila, do you know? Do you know who Sakila is? You know who? Anyone know who Sakila is? <laughs> you guys know definitely. <laughs> okay, Sakila is the one on the on the picture here. It is our logo, the dolphin. Our dolphin is named Sakila, so it is a female dolphin. So fall in love with it. All right. So um, as you know, the, at this moment, uh, IoT is a, is a, is the trend. IoT and big data, but beyond behind any great application on IoT and big data, there is always a reliable and great database, right? You need database for a lot of things. Now, um, with uh, with uh, if, if you already if you know that at this moment MySQL already come up to 5.7, 5.7 came out like uh, about October last year, right? So what is it in the 5.7 that want to intrigue you? S we have a lot of improvements, like, uh, you know, as the in tradition of MySQL, we always have huge improvement for every major version. Every major version, we always uh, target uh, around 18 months between the version. So uh, right now, as you can see, we have F7 and a lot of improvement, especially uh, three times faster than MySQL 5.6 earlier. And hence in ODB, I will talk more about this later on uh, in more detail. Replication, optimizer cost. And uh, the big thing here in 5.7 is this, JSON support. We started to support JSON data type, native. Last time, we, we used to support. We used to, uh, people used to uh, store JSON in text data type. Now, they, they no longer need that, okay? Now, um, you know, in MySQL 5.7, we do a lot of work in it. We have a lot of work logs uh, implemented, MTR tests, bugs fix as you 2,800. So this is all because of, uh, of our of our uh, open source community contribution as well. Uh, they, they all review, you guys actually, some of you guys here might have contributed to MySQL as well. Uh, you, you guys review, you guys uh, help us test, test, the, test the, 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 the beta release and alpha release, and uh, so we can come up uh, GA on time. Right, and then just now we talk about performance. Now performance. Uh, this is one of the one of the match benchmark we did for five 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 six and five seven. So as you can see here, the the difference in speed, in performance, is huge. This is a benchmark on SQL point selects. So as you can see here, this is five dot six. This is five dot seven, which is uh, reaching one one point six. Uh, million QPS on a four socket 18 core machine, which is 72 core total. Connection request. This is uh, this benchmark is uh, is uh, is uh, measuring on how fast connection is being done in uh, within MySQL. So this is uh, what they do is is uh, connect, reconnect, connect, reconnect, connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect, <coughs> right? So at this moment, 5.7, we did a lot of improvements. We actually reached 100,000 connect per second. And uh, in uh, SysBench benchmark, okay, I missed this. This is supposed to be a read. Okay, this is read only. This is read write. So as you can see, we did have a lot of uh, improvements in OLTP transactional uh, bench against our predecessor. And okay, now this is to show you how scalable, how scalable we are. Five, six last time was dubbed to scale up to 60 
core. Right now, we are 5.7, we, we are able to scale up to, uh, not up to, we, in this case, we only uh, benchmark it on the 72 core system. So as you can see, this is the, the graph that we have. If you see this graph, what do you think? If we put more, more core, do you think it will go up? Do you think it will go up? Anyone? <coughs> maybe, maybe not. But if this is look like this, like yeah, maybe there might there's a big possibility that it might still scale. Okay. All right. So uh, right, starting from the optimizer. Now the improvement the optimizer. So uh, as as you might already know, optimizer you need optimizer in every database. We have optimizer to optimize your query to find the way the the best optimized way to run and access your tables and grab your data, right? So in, op in 5.7 optimizer, we already adopted the cost method, the cost-based method. Uh, so we, we, we make it um, more optimized. It's smarter now. Um, we, on top of that, we have uh, JSON explain. If you know about, uh, about our optimizer, you have a uh, you, you can do, OK, basically, and at every query, you can do explain plan. When you, you can actually see or how the data access being accessed by this query, right? Anyone of you have used this before, right? OK, now this explain plan, you can actually, uh, now we have improved it. You can actually see it in graph, in graphic with, uh, with our workbench. If anyone have used workbench, our development tool is also open source, community edition. It's free to use. Okay. Uh, now we have uh, generated columns. I I can talk a lot about this, but I don't. I only have 20 minutes. So, if any if anyone wants to talk more about this, uh, come to our exhibits later, and we we can talk more about some specific feature that you guys want. But at this moment, I just uh, go through the list. Uh, support for InnoDB. Uh, Better support for GIS as well. Query rewrite plugin. This is one of the cool plugin that we have. This is to rewrite your query. Where is where where do you think this is used? This is used when let's for example you have already uh, uh, developed your application. Done is done. Then it's already so let's say it's already production. Now. If you want to, if you, if you, then you, you realize that, hey, this, uh, there is some query that actually uh, can be you know, optimized, and I need to change the query. But as you, as you know, if you want to roll out in production, you need to do a lot of changes on the apps, uh, on the, and this is pretty troublesome. So in this case, what you do is you can actually change it use this query rewrite so every time this query comes in it will it will be replaced by the new query that you put here in the plugin so it does not need you to actually change the coding in the apps you can actually put it and program in the database layer okay and also if you if you realize that uh, that you want to make the the query faster you can actually add hints in the query rewrite. Means your so your apps is clean. There is no there is no hint that you use at all. All the hints is just added after the query comes into the database. Right. JSON. JSON. This is the biggest uh, feature in my in MySQL 5.7. Uh, JSON data type now we support native means that we can you can actually index it you can actually search it it's all it's all in the form of json json format no more in text right so as you can see here this is the difference in search the query time normally last time without the json support we put json in text so text data type you normally re you reach uh, you need about uh, this much time to
to query. JSON data type is only this much. Index is even, even much, much faster. You see? So if you guys see the need to use JSON, be my guest, try out MySQL 5.7. It's available for download already. Now, sys schema. Sys schema is basically, it's, uh, we talk about uh, um, ability, um, uh, how should I say, it's, it's basically a, a snapshot of, of information on your, on performance of your database. So in case you, in case you have, uh, you know you have an issue in I.O., what, uh, which, which table actually causing it? You want to know that. You can actually check from this sys schema. This sys schema is actually a bunch of views that shows you all this information. Which one is the top I.O. hotspot? Which one is the, what is the, the slowest query in your database? And, uh, and many, many more. So you can check it out here. Um, this is uh, also available in, you can, you can see in Workbench as well, you can install from there. But in 5.7, it's already installed by default. It's similar to Oracle V$, uh, Microsoft SQL, if you guys use it. But I probably, you guys not using it because we all open source. <laughs> OK. Right, GIS. Uh, we have improvement on uh, using a boost.geometry. Anyone here using GIS feature? No, OK. InnoDB improvements. Now uh, we started to support native partitioning. Means that uh, um, last time we used for, we used each one handler for each partition, each partition. So in this case, uh, because we support native partitioning now, we only use one handler for one table. So this makes it, uh, makes it uh, uh, more, more efficient in the way that it, how it's safe on memory to manage the, to, to handle the partitions. Uh, full text search, we support now the search on Chinese, uh, Japanese, and Korea language. Uh, special indexes, support for 32K, 62, 64K pages, in ODB pages. General table space support. If you guys remember that in 5.6, our direction is going to one table for one data file, one table space, right? Last time. So now, we actually provide also uh, flexibility for you guys to actually use uh, general table space means that you can actually also, again, put several table into one table space. So you have this option as well. If, uh, but on the other hand, you can also use one table per one table space. It ups, it's up to you. Now we, have, we give you more flexibility. Uh, group replication, I will talk later. Support for cache preloading, storage footprint, um, in ODB field factor, that will be uh, you can, you can ask me when you come to my exhibit. Uh, bulk data load performance improved. Um, resize, OK. Now, we more and more uh, processing we can do online, in, let's say in InnoDB. Now we, we support changing InnoDB buffer pool online. So you don't actually need to restart your MySQL anymore. Last time, we, we, uh, you still need to. Now, no more. We have separate undo table space. Now, for those people that is very, very uh, uh, aware of the, I mean, uh, how should I say, is very adept with database, undo table space is very, very important. So because this is ability for you to do a rollback, right? Whenever, whenever you want to rollback transactions, right? Now. The undo table space, we can actually split it now uh, on a different uh, location. So you can actually put in, uh, let's say you put it in a different disk volume. So make, it, make this, uh, this volume that contain your data uh, relieve from the burden of running the undo table space as well. Because this undo can be really, really hard, can be a hot spot. 
especially in if you have a high workload, high load of uh, high payload of your database. Um, enlarge uh, rename index can be done online as well. Enlarge now we can enlarge a Farcar data type column online as well. Uh, okay. In ODB, bulk load for index creation. Right now, we have a much faster index creation. Uh, in ODB fill factor, I'm not going to talk much about this. Uh, if you can, uh, if you have question, I can come to my exhibit. Um, replication. Now, in replication, we have a big, big improvements. Why? It's uh, basically um, in 5.7, we are following up from what what the uh, 5.6 have left, uh, left us, uh, we have a GTID. So what is GTID? GTID means, uh, GTID stands for Global Transaction ID. So in, in the whole replication system, the, if you, we use G Global Transaction ID, that means every transaction in the whole replication system only have one ID. What it means is that it will make it easy for any one of this uh, uh, rep, uh, system in the replication to know how much it is lagging behind the master. So this allow us to do what we call self-healing replication. Last time in before 5.6, whenever you have a network disconnection, you might there might be you might need to manually re restore you manually. Uh, fix the replication and this takes time because between the between the master and the slave this is uh, the must the lock file and lock position is different when you come to this we'll have uh, you know we'll have uh, everyone sharing the same id so the slave know hey oh um let's say the master is 10 the, the slave is five okay i'm missing five latest transaction so I'm just pulling the last five transactions. Easy, right? Um, and hence, semi-synchronous replication is, uh, we call it lossless now, because uh, semi-synchronous means that we actually make sure that the slave, that the, the changes is already, is already uh, sent to the slave server. Now in this case, we, we improve it a little bit further. Every transaction comes into master, we will make sure that change uh, go to the slave server first before we commit in the master. So this makes sure that if this if the, the if the, if there is no acknowledgement coming from the slave, so we never commit the transaction. So people that see the slave and see the master will not see different data. Okay, multi-source replication. I'll talk about it later. Dynamic slave filters, not really okay. Um, GTID now we can we can enable GTID online. Um, GTID online, so um, you don't need to restart MySQL again to when you want to enable it. GTID last time we need to in five six now no more. Now this might probably be the the one of the biggest break into our replication, which is multi-source replication. Last time, traditionally, replication only, only, can only have one master, right? And you can have as many slaves as you want, but at most, you can only have one master. Now, in this case, we actually make it, uh, uh, push it a little bit further. We can have a lot of master, one slave. Where do you need this? Where do you need, uh, where, what kind of case do you, uh, you think you can use this? It's where you need, where you need to consolidate. Let's say you have, uh, uh, let's say your end user, maybe your, your client have a lot of uh, uh, supermarkets, let's say, uh, supermarkets around, let's say, Singapore, that we have 20 branches. And then these 20 branches, each, each of them has uh, their own POS retail, uh, retail uh, app applications, right? So what, what, they, what they do with this is that 
on the headquarter, we have a consolidated centralized database. So all these 20 branches will actually send the data through replication and all consolidate in, in the HQ, in the headquarter. So the headquarter can run analytic, reporting, and everything. It's all done uh, using MySQL technology. Right, high availability improvements, uh, tracking session, transaction version tokens, you have a lot of things. One of the in interesting stuff is MySQL pump. Uh, MySQL pump is the, as you know, you have MySQL dump last time, now we have MySQL pump. MySQL pump, the, the notable benefit is that you can run in parallel. When you do export, you can run in parallel. So it's faster than MySQL dump. Right. Uh, group replication. Uh, this is, by the way, this is still in labs. This is also one of the greatest thing that we are waiting to have out there. That uh, in this case, we can have, let's say, three servers. Right. Everyone will be updated each to each other. So we have this is a form of HA, replication based high availability architecture. If you heard about uh, any anyone of here, anyone here heard about Galera before? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Extra DB cluster. Okay. This uh, this is similar to that. Is exactly providing the providing three let's say three three the duplicates. So any one of them you can actually shoot uh, your application can shoot and write and select update and anything. They will update each other at the back. This is a, a very uh, a cool uh, a feature that will come. Uh, we are targeting maybe around a few six to nine months from now, maybe. But don't take my word for it, because it's, uh, there is no guarantee here. We might, we might make it faster. We, can, we might make it uh, a little bit later. Um, router. Right. MySQL router. Now you don't actually need to have a router, or let's say you, you don't actually need HA proxy anymore, if you, if you know what I mean, to, to do load balancing, right? You actually, we actually have our own product, MySQL router. This is also open source. You can use it anyhow, anywhere, anytime, right? Uh, transaction, uh, it is based. It is based on the. You can use load balance based on round robin or any other thing. It can it can even do aggregate as well. So that that means 80% to first server, 20% to the second server. You can do that. Right. This is the MySQL router. Now the good thing about this is that this is the extensible architecture. Means that you can actually develop your own plugin and put it there. You see, you can actually, it's like, let's say you want something more than just 80, than, than just aggregate and doing round robin. You have your own algorithm. You can actually write your own and put it there. Okay, so it's extensible. Okay, uh, the organizer already, already tell me to cut it off. Then this is just my, my last slide. Uh, we are available in repos. Uh, all Linux, we are available. You can just download the repos there. We are, uh, we are also on GitHub as well. So this is my last slide. Uh, any questions? Okay, just one question. Oh, one right. question. Uh, well, next speaker sets up. Okay.